cool. So now we've seen a little bit of our single page apps, and now I kind of get an idea of, of what that's all about. But tell me a little bit more about Angular. I mean, basically, how is it built? How is it designed? Mm -hmm. What are some of the basic, well, philosophies yeah. of Angular? Yeah, sure. So let's talk a little bit about the, the philosophies of this, just like you said. Um, so they do believe in the idea of separation of HTML manipulation and the logic. So your JavaScript and your HTML kind of separated out. Uh, they also believe in the separation of the pages and the server in the sense that the data gets sent to the client and then we let the client take care of the page. So kind of the single page application approach. And they do have a very structured and uh, opinionated framework on how the UI design works, how the business logic works, and really the testing. I like that word, opinionated. <laughs> uh, and, and there are certainly different ways that you can do things. And you'll notice that about, I think, a lot of frameworks is that they, they do have their own way of, yeah. of doing things. And sometimes you'll notice that one framework will want to do things one way and another framework will want to do things uh, a different way. Yeah. And right along those lines, I know that Angular is going through um, kind of a major revision that we had Angular 1. Obviously, we're here to talk about Angular 2. If, if somebody has done Angular 1 in the past, what do they need to know about the difference between 1 and 2? Yeah, sure. Just to recap real quick with Angular 1, um, Angular 1 is definitely a structured framework. That's kind of what it brought to us. The separation of HTML and logic and kind of the client-side templating along with the things I said earlier. So Angular 2 um, brings a component-based UI. So that's the idea of kind of a, that modular design where uh, as much more of that do not repeat yourself and kind of pieces you can kind of add to your application. Um, also TypeScript, which we'll talk about in a little bit, it does offer the ability to write our code in TypeScript. Um, and then it's also very uh, well built in a sense that it's backwards compatible. So you can have an Angular 1 application right now and you can get Angular 2 code and add it onto Angular 1. Um, and it is faster, this is relative to Angular, uh, but when we talk about templating and taking HTML and JavaScript and putting it together, uh, Angular 2 is about two, three times faster on benchmarks in doing that. Okay. So a little bit on the the differences, and I and you do have to know a little bit of Angular one in this slide. So just kind of be aware of that. If not, don't worry too much about it. Just kind of uh, observe it for now. But in this slide here, we see Angular one on the left, kind of the general how we start a module in Angular one and how we create a controller, which is really the logic for the HTML block of code. The controller has a name. Our HTML we have. Um, we have to define part of the HTML to be controlled by that controller. And then in Angular 2, it's really in pieces. So what you see there is uh, we define a component, a module essentially, and we give it the HTML we want right on the template. And the JavaScript is right there in the class you see right under the template. And we just have a label, in this case, a selector called my app. Every time we use that selector, we have that entire template and all of its logic um, imported there essentially and, and used. So. Okay. So just a, kind of a real quick, when I go in and I take a look at, at that code, mm -hmm. uh, the big difference that I notice there on, the, uh, on that little block of code is on Angular 1, the code is being called by the HTML. So on the HTML, I say yeah. ng-controller, and now I'm calling back into the code. Whereas with Angular 2, um, syntax and a couple of other things aside, because I know that we're using TypeScript there, but the code is now calling that HTML that I say selector my app, and now I have an element called my app. So there's a little yeah. bit of a difference in how the code is separated as well. Exactly. There. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I dig it. Now, yeah. the last big thing then is about when to choose Angular. Mm -hmm. That one uh, phrase that I always like to go to when we're talking about all of these various MVVM frameworks. Mm -hmm is that there's a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. But if you only have one, if, if the only tool that you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, not everything, of course, is a nail. That you know, other frameworks like Knockout and like React exist for a reason, because mm -hmm. they are there to solve problems. Where is Angular best situated? Why should I choose Angular? And I think, more importantly, why should I not choose Angular for exactly. certain types of projects? Absolutely. So we, we'll look at it kind of generally speaking. Uh, Angular is heavier framework than most out there, and it's really good for certain reasons. And some of those would be uh, large projects, uh, maybe large development teams where you do want an opinionated framework, uh, where you do want the developers to kind of code in the same style and manner. Uh, perhaps it's complex in the sense that there's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of animation, a lot of things changing, and you're really using the single page application 
to the, the max, essentially, right? So those are some pretty good reasons to really consider Angular as your framework. And alternatively, of course, we look at um, small projects, maybe very small teams. Um, perhaps a pinionate framework is something you don't like or you don't want your team to have, which is completely fine, right? Um, and then applications are simple. Uh, maybe there's not much uh, change of single page application type changes. There's not much animation. Uh, overall, a simpler project. You can go with something smaller. I mean, even jQuery work really well with a lot of applications, mm -hmm. considering the size of your application and the amount of developers and those kind of things. Okay, perfect. So then uh, now I think we've kind of seen the basics of Angular, talked a little bit about where it fits. I guess the last thing then is to close off this module and then actually get in and start taking a look at uh, some code. And we're going to start off by taking a look at uh, TypeScript. That's going to be the next module. Yep.